In this lesson, we're going to be finding the degrees of monomials, classifying polynomials, adding and subtracting polynomials, and solving real-life problems. A monomial is a number, a variable, or the product of a number, and one or more variables with whole number exponents. The degree of the monomial is the sum of the exponents of the variables in the monomial. The degree of a non-zero constant term is zero. The constant zero does not have a degree. If you see in this table down here, this monomial 10 is a constant term, so it has a degree zero. 3x, you can think of this as 3x to the power of 1, so it's going to be degree 1. Here I have 1 half a times b squared. In this case, I have two different variables, so I'll add up the variables. So I have a to the 1 and b to the 2, so 1 plus 2 is 3. And then here I have negative 1.8 times m to the fifth power, okay? And some examples of non-monomials, okay? So this right here, five plus x, there are two terms here, and that's not gonna be a monomial. We only want one term, okay? Here, I have two over n. I never want n or my variable in the bottom of a fraction, so that's why that's not a monomial. Four to the a is not because I don't want uh, my variable in the exponent, and then x to the negative 1, I don't want any negative exponents because if you can remember, I can rewrite negative exponents as fractions, and then my variable will be on the bottom of a fraction, which if you look back up here, is not a monomial. For this example, we're going to find the degree of each monomial. Okay, so for the first example, I say I have 5 times x squared. Well, the 5 doesn't really do anything. The coefficient doesn't really matter here. So I'm just really worried about the x, and there's only one variable. It's being taken to the second power. So this is degree 2. Okay. For this one, I have two variables here. Once again, I can ignore the uh, coefficient when it comes to the degree. So this x is not being taken to a power, which means that the exponent is going to be 1. So this is x to the 1. Let me zoom in a little bit. x to the 1 and y to the 3. So I just add these two up. 1 plus 3 is 4. So this is going to be degree 4. For part c, I have 8x cubed y cubed. Well, once again, I'm going to ignore the uh, coefficient when it comes to degree. Then I have x to the third and y to the third. Once again, I want to add up the exponents of my variables. So 3 plus 3 is going to be 6. So this term is degree 6. And then here I have a constant term. And if you remember, the degree of a non-zero constant term is always going to be 0. Okay, so I have successfully found the degree of each of these monomials, and now we're done. Now we're going to talk about polynomials. A polynomial is a monomial or a sum of monomials. Each monomial is called a term of the polynomial. A polynomial with two terms is a binomial. A polynomial with three terms is a trinomial. You can think of bicycle and tricycle, these uh, prefixes here. Okay, so here's an example of a binomial, 5x plus 2, two terms. A trinomial would be x squared plus 5x plus 2. The degree of a polynomial is the greatest degree of its terms. A polynomial in one variable is in standard form when the exponents of the terms decrease from left to right. When you write a polynomial in standard form, the coefficient of the first term is the leading coefficient. So if you look down here, this polynomial, 2x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 12 is in standard form because each term is in order of degree. Okay, so I have my cubed term, then my squared term, then my linear term, just x to the 1 here, and then my constant term. Okay, the degree of this entire polynomial is just the largest degree of the monomial, which is going to be 3 here. Okay, and then the leading coefficient is the number that's being multiplied by the largest degree monomial here. So that's going to be 2. For example 2, we're going to write 15x minus x cubed plus 3 in standard form. We're going to identify the degree and the leading coefficient of the polynomial, okay? Well, if you remember, I want to write my largest degree term first, and my x cubed part of this is going to be my largest degree. Now, its coefficient is this negative sign, okay, negative 1, but I don't need to write the 1. So I'm just going to rewrite this entire thing as negative x cubed, okay? Then my next term is going to be 15x, because I have 15x left over, and I have this constant term of 3, but I want to write my x term before I write my 3, so I'm going to write plus 15x, because this is a positive 15, and then I will write plus 3. All right, so now I've successfully written this polynomial in standard form. Now I want to identify the degree and the leading coefficient. 
Well, if you remember, the degree of the entire polynomial is the degree of the monomial with the largest degree. So in this case, that's going to be 3 here because um, this x cubed has degree 3. So my degree is 3. Now I want my leading coefficient. I'll just write LC, but that means leading coefficient here. And that's just the number that's being multiplied by our leading part of this polynomial, okay? So our leading term is this negative x cubed here, and the coefficient of this is just the negative sign, which means it's gonna be negative one. Remember, you can always write a one in here. So my leading coefficient here is negative one, okay? So we've successfully written this polynomial in standard form. We've identified the degree and the leading coefficient, and now we're done. For example three, we're gonna write each polynomial in standard form, identify the degree, and classify each polynomial by the number of terms. Okay, so for the first one, in standard form, well, there's only one term here, so I'm just going to rewrite the term. It's going to be negative 3z to the fourth power. So that is in standard form. Okay? Now I'm going to identify the degree, and this is going to be degree 4 because this z is being taken to the fourth power. So I'll just put d for degree, and that's going to be 4. And it doesn't want us to identify the leading coefficient. We could if we wanted to, but it wants us to, if you see here, classify each polynomial by the number of terms. Well, there's only one term here, so this is going to be a monomial. All right, so now we're done with part A. For part B, I want to write this in standard form. I see I have an x squared term, so I'm going to write my x squared term first, then my x term, then my constant term. So it's going to be 5x squared minus x plus 4. Remember, I'm going to bring the sign with everything. Okay. Then I want to identify the degree, which is going to be degree 2, because that's the largest degree of any of these terms here. It's going to be degree is 2. And then I want to identify this by the number of terms. Well, this is a three-term polynomial, which is going to be a trinomial. All right, so now we're done with part B. For part C, I'm going to write this in standard form. So I have 8q and q to the fifth. Well, q to the fifth is a higher degree term than 8q. So I'm going to write q to the fifth power and then plus 8q. All right, and to identify this, degree, it's going to be 5, because that's what this q to the fifth power is, the leading term. So degree is 5. And then this is a binomial, because there are two terms in this polynomial. Binomial. I like to think of bicycles and tricycles to help me remember by and try. Anyway, we've successfully identified the degree, classified each polynomial, and written them in standard form, and now we're done. Adding and subtracting polynomials. A set of numbers is closed under an operation when the operation performed on any two numbers in the set results in a number that is also in the set. For example, the set of integers is closed under addition, subtraction, and multiplication. This means that if a and b are two integers, then a plus b, a minus b, and a times b are also integers. The set of polynomials is closed under addition and subtraction. So. The sum or difference of any two polynomials is also a polynomial. To add polynomials, add like terms. You can use a vertical or a horizontal format. So in this example, we're going to find the sum of these polynomials. All right. Well, all we're doing when we're adding polynomials is combining like terms. And if you remember, like terms are terms with identical variable parts. So every part of the variable needs to be the same. And you just have the same variable and that variable needs to be taken to the same exponent. And if there's multiple variables, each variable has to be taken to the same exponent in each term for them to be like terms, all right? So anyway, I'm gonna be adding 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus x to 2x squared plus x cubed minus one, all right? Well, since I'm adding these, the parentheses don't really matter. So in part A, I'm just gonna add my like terms. Part B, I'm going to set it up vertically and show you how to do that. You can use either method. Um, anyway, so first I'm going to start with my x cubed terms. I see I have a 2x cubed and then I have another x cubed here. So 2x cubed plus x cubed, that's just going to be 3x cubed. All right, now I'm going to do my x squared terms. So I have a negative 5x squared, put a box around that, and then I have a positive 2x squared. Well, negative 5x squared plus 2x squared, that's going to be negative 3x squared. And then I don't have any other like terms. I just have a plus x and a minus 1. So I'm just going to bring that down, plus x minus 1. 
notice how I wrote this in standard form because I started out with my cubed terms and then I went to my square terms and then my linear term and then my constant term, okay? So anyway, this is in standard form, which our answer should always be, and now we're done with part A. For part B, I'm gonna set this up slightly differently. I'm gonna use the vertical method, uh, which basically means you line up your like terms, okay? So I have a 3x squared, an x, and a negative six here. Then I have an x squared, a 4x, and a 10. Okay, so I'm gonna do 3x squared plus x minus six, and then I'm gonna write x squared plus 4x plus 10, all right? And now I'm just gonna add vertically. So 3x squared plus x squared, well, these are like terms, so that's gonna be 4x squared. And then I'm gonna have x plus 4x, that's gonna be 5x. Then I'm gonna have negative six plus 10, which is gonna be positive four. All right, and notice how I lined up all my like terms, and that's why this method works. Anyway, my answer is in standard form, so now I'm done with part B. In example five, we're gonna find the difference here. We're gonna be subtracting. So uh, in part A, I'm gonna do the vertical method, and then in part B, I'm just gonna end up distributing this negative, and then we're gonna combine like terms. Uh, I prefer the method that I'm gonna show you in part B, but both will work. Anyway, in part A, like I said, I'm gonna set up this vertical method, so I have 4n, squared, and then I have a plus five, but if you notice, I have a linear term in this polynomial, but not this one. So I'm just gonna leave a blank space here. Okay, I'm gonna put my plus five over here. And then I'm gonna write minus, and I like to put parentheses, you don't have to, but it just uh, helps me do it. So I'm gonna write minus, and then in parentheses, negative two n squared plus two n, and then minus four. All right, and now I'm gonna subtract. So I'm gonna do 4n squared minus negative 2n. Well, minus a negative turns to a positive, so this is gonna be 4n squared plus 2n squared, which is gonna be 6n squared. Then here, I have nothing here, so I can just put zero if I want to. Put plus zero. Zero minus 2n is just gonna be negative 2n. And then five minus negative four, that's the same as five plus four, that's gonna be nine positive nine. All right, so now we're done with part A, and notice that my answer is in standard form. For part B, I'm just gonna distribute this negative, like I said. So I'm gonna zoom in here, and by distributing this negative, I'm gonna write negative three x squared plus x plus eight, and I'm just gonna bring the rest of this down, four x squared minus three x plus five. Now I just need to combine my like terms. So first I'll start with my x squared terms, that's the highest degree terms I have here. So I'm gonna have 4x squared and then minus 3x squared, that's gonna be x squared, okay? And then here I do have a negative uh, next to this three, I kind of circled it, but this is negative three. I'm gonna try to box that off. Negative three x and then plus x. Well, negative three x plus x is gonna be negative two x, okay? And then last I have plus five and plus eight. So positive five plus eight is positive 13. And notice that this is in standard form, so now we're done with part B. For example six, a penny is thrown straight down from a height of 200 feet. At the same time, a paintbrush is dropped from a height of 100 feet. The polynomials represent the heights in feet of the objects after t seconds. Part A, write a polynomial that represents the distance between the penny and the paintbrush after t seconds. Part B, interpret the coefficients of the polynomial in part A. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do to figure out the distance between the penny and the paintbrush is just subtract these two things. If I wanted to figure out the distance between where this person is and where this person is, I would just subtract these two values, okay? To subtract their heights from each other. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with the penny and the paintbrush, okay? So I'm gonna do the penny, which starts off higher. So negative 16t squared, this is for part A, by the way, uh, minus 40t and then plus 200. By the way, when you're writing down t's, I like to curl them so they don't look like pluses. Anyway, we're gonna subtract negative 16 t squared plus 100 from this. So I'm just gonna write it like this, minus parentheses, negative 16 t squared plus 100. Okay, so I prefer just distributing this negative whenever I'm subtracting, but you can, uh, you can definitely set this up vertically if you want. So anyway, when I distribute this, this negative becomes a plus, so I get plus 16t squared and then minus 100. 
Then I'll just bring these terms down. Negative 16t squared minus 40t plus 200. Okay, It's not really all too perfectly lined up, but that's okay. Now I'm going to combine my like terms. So I have negative 16t squared and a positive 16t squared. Those are going to cancel. So if you see that, these cancel out. And then I just have a negative 40t. That's the only t term. So I just bring down negative 40t. And then I have 200 and then minus 100. So I'll just write plus 100 because 200 minus 100 is positive 100. So I've successfully written my answer for part A. This represents the distance between the penny and the paintbrush after t seconds. And we're done with part A. For part B, I want to interpret the coefficients for the polynomial of part A. Well, here's my polynomial for part A. And remember, t is the amount of time that passes by. So let's say that t is 0. Okay, So if I plug 0 in for t, this whole term would drop out. I just have 100. Okay, And what would that represent? Well, that would represent the distance between the penny and the paintbrush as they started off. Okay, And if you notice here, this plus 200 and this plus 100, they represent the height above the ground. Okay, so if this is 200 feet above the ground, and this is 100 feet above the ground, it makes sense that there's a difference of 100 at the beginning. So if I go back down here, I'm going to write that down. The 100 represents the distance between the penny and paintbrush before they are dropped. All right, so we've dealt with this term, this 100, and I think it only said coefficients, but I'll deal with this constant term as well. And now I want to deal with the negative 40, okay? Well, this negative 40 is being multiplied by t. So let's figure this out after one second goes by. So if one second goes by, I would have negative 40 times 1 plus 100. Okay, well, that's just going to be negative 40 plus 100, and that's going to be 60, okay? So after 0 seconds, they are 100 feet apart, and after 1 second, they are 60 feet apart. So what this is representing is actually this is the speed that the penny was thrown, okay? And the reason we can figure that out is I can see that, one, this kind of looks like a linear expression. This looks like y equals mx plus b. But two, you can see that if I increase my second, so if I go from 0 to 1 second, so my distance goes from 100 to 60. Okay, And then if I go 2 seconds, I plug that in, negative 40 times 2 plus 100. Well, that's going to be negative 80 plus 100. And that's going to be 20. My y value here would be 20. So every time I increase the time by one second, I'm decreasing the distance between by 40 feet. So what that means is that the penny is approaching the paintbrush at a speed of 40 feet per second. All right, so that one was a little bit confusing, but we finally figured it out. We know that the 100 is the starting distance between them, and then we know that the penny is approaching the paintbrush at a speed of 40 feet per second, and now we're done.